Today we're gonna talk turtles. That's what you all asked for on our last video, so here we go. Before I get into showing you some of the species and showing you their enclosures, I just wanted to tell you why we started keeping so many species of turtles and tortoises. One of them is because our love for them, and the other is for conservation purposes. A lot of people, when I tell them that we have endangered species, look at me like I'm crazy. They're like, you're not a zoo. You shouldn't have an endangered species. You're just a person. You don't know what you're doing. But little do people know there are books and there is research that can be done to educate you to care for these species in the proper way. And as reptile keepers, it is our responsibility to promote and get people excited to keep these species in a natural way and also to breed them in captivity so that we can conserve the species. Let's take, for example, in Australia, what's going on with the wildfires right now. There are probably a lot of animals that are losing their habitat and they may, may even go endangered or extinct because of these wildfires. So they're probably going to turn to people keeping animals in captivity to repopulate the wild. Now I know there's many concerns that come with that and we won't even get into all that, but a lot of the animals that we do keep in captivity are endangered, such as your pet parrot, like the African gray, the cockatoo, the sun conure. A lot of people don't realize that they're endangered species that they're keeping in their house. So it is our responsibility to inspire people to keep them in a proper manner. Another thing with the whole climate change uproar is people are flipping out. We're losing our earth, Mother Earth. Well, let's start with ourselves. Let's reuse and recycle. That's what we've done here. We got a phone call from a local sanctuary asking us if we wanted their old uh, tiger and lion uh, water vats that they would play in and soak in. We said, absolutely, heck yeah, we'll be over to get them. And not only did they give us that, but they also gave us the water tubs that were for their lions and tigers and other big cats. Um, so we took a couple cans of spray paint to them, spray painted them to camouflage them to make the animals feel secure. And then we also put inside the enclosures, we put, you know, natural water plants. And if I can see, let me grab, oh, there we go. This is called a black pond marsh turtle, also known as the smiling terrapin. I must say this species is one of my favorite species to keep. Uh, they're an Asian species. They're very reclusive, quiet, calm. We're hoping to produce babies from them this year. A lot of people only keep the turtles that are popular, such as like the red-eared sliders, the yellow belly sliders. But let's face the facts. This is as large as they get. Let me see. This is a little female here. And this is as big as the species gets. So it's actually a really nice sized turtle. When you look at the red-eared sliders and you look at the yellow belly slider females, they get huge. And as pet keepers, we should not breed them and sell them to people that are not gonna be able to properly house them just because we want the money. We need to take on the responsibility of keeping these animals in the proper way. We need to get people inspired. We need to promote people to keep them. Let me see if I can, oh, uh, hold on. Oh, I got them. <laughs> this right here is, <laughs> he's like, no, what have you done? This is an Asian leaf turtle also known as Cyclemes dentata. I don't know if you can see on the bottom of the shell, it's got these really cool starburst. And when they're babies, even kind of now, they mimic a leaf. Pretty cool species. Uh, we're hoping to produce those this year as well, because if you notice, we have a lot of leaf litter in the enclosure because this species lays their egg kind of above ground. They lay their eggs in the leaf litter. Um, if we move along here, I don't know. Let me see if I can catch these guys for you. These are our Chinese golden thread turtles. I do not recommend these to be kept as pets by everyone because the females get huge. And how are you gonna properly keep a turtle that size in an apartment or a single family home? So again, it's our responsibility as keepers. Let's see if I can find a female in here. Hey, big mama. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is the Chinese golden thread. I know <laughs> she says, 
Uh, hello, please put me down. You see how massive this turtle is? This is a huge turtle. Hey, mama. <laughs> anyway, she was actually an original import into this country. Uh, I'm gonna put her back in, she's a little upset. Ugh. Anyways, so we get babies from those every year. I'm gonna move along into the next enclosure, which is our West African mud turtles. Now these guys, I know people are like, what, a West African mud turtle? <laughs> a lot of people are like, they view these kind of as a crap turtle. I know that sounds horrible, but they're a mud turtle. I think they are so cool. Every year on July, the first week of July, the females come out of the water. As you see, we recycle. Hold on, let me show you really quick. This is an old uh, shelving unit. It's actually perfect for them to climb in and out. I know it's not so pretty. I should have probably painted it, but I was afraid the paint would come off in the water. But anyways, they come out up here and they guard their nest. And when I walk up and I spray water, they're puffing up, they're doing all these weird things and they're protecting their nest. And within a couple of days, first week of July, like clockwork, little babies are popping up everywhere and the kids and I have a ball collecting them. I don't know, let me see. I think I see a little guy over here I'm gonna try to catch. It's a little hard because this water's kind of deep. Ah, this is my baby from two years ago. They don't get a whole lot bigger than this. <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh, you've caught me. I don't really play with my turtles a lot <laughs> or pick them up. I do do health checks when I clean their enclosures. This actually looks like it's gonna be a, a little female. She's super cute, but I'm gonna go ahead and put her back in. There you go, darling. And let's hurry up before the sun goes down. And I'm gonna take you over to see all the hatchling turtles, my nursery. Oh, by the way, I have monkey-tailed skinks, and I grow pothos everywhere for them because they love the pothos plant. These, in this enclosure, are the native Florida three-stripe mud turtles. If you see in here, uh, let me see if I can grab one out. These are actually awesome pets for people that live in the city to keep because they don't get very big. They're super tiny. Where are you? Come out, come out wherever you are. Ha. There's one of my females. Hey, darling. <laughs> this is a three-stripe adult female. She produces babies every single year. If you see all the, uh, I got like old logs and rocks and stuff in here. They come out in the springtime, lay their eggs. Whenever we get the first rains that flood the enclosure in the summer, babies start popping up and they're about the size of my thumbnail. They're super tiny. It's really cool to be able to see these animals flourish in your care. So here we are. We are at the, whew, I'm a little out of breath from catching turtles. We are at the baby enclosures, which house all of our hatchling turtles. My hubby built this awesome system for me because he knows I'm obsessed and I want to take care of them. So in this vat, this is also a recycled vat that somebody gave us. It's filled with water and aquatic plants for filtration. The water pumps up through here, goes into each individual tub where you can control with a, a, nozzle, a nozzle here uh, the water flow. And then the water comes out, flows through these aquatic plants and filters it. So it's basically like a self uh, sustainable system here. And then my favorite spot of all on the property where I love to come every morning and feed all my critters. I'm not walking backwards, I'm sure it'll fall right off. <laughs> Is our pond. <laughs> I don't know if you see the big cypress tree over there. It's, it's natural Florida at its finest in the spring months and in the summer months. I come out here and I feed all the native Florida turtles that are in our pond. They all come up, they start crawling up the bank waiting for me to feed them. It's definitely one of my happy moments. <laughs> There's the kids. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for joining us. Thank you for doing a quick tour. I hope you enjoy our videos. I hope to be more educational next time. I wanna inspire you to keep animals in the proper way and to educate people about their proper husbandry. 
So join us next time on our next video. Remember, we're a work in progress, so we're getting there and we'll hope to give you better video content next time.